Hi, this is Munson from Munson Music. I'm going to talk about how you play the body by Wale. And our main tune actually resolves around this, this main bass line, kind of open E, and then an open A, and then a second fret on the A, and then fourth fret on the low E string. So we're kind of playing an E note, and then an A note, and then second fret on the A is a B note, and then fourth fret on the low E is a G sharp note. And the chords that would kind of back that up would start on an E minor chord. Normally you do that first finger on the A second, second finger on the D second. And if you strum all those together, oh, it sounds so sad. It sounds like E minor chord. Now you may also dig on adding in third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, making that an E minor seven. Or if you really want to jazz this up, or if you like bar chords in general, it can be very cool to do this as a seventh fret bar. The second finger on the B eighth, third finger on the D nine, pinky on the D G nine for E minor. Or you could lift off the pinky, make that an E minor 7. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E 10 for an E minor 7. Or if you really want to jazz this up, you can do an E minor 9. Doing the first finger on the D 5th fret, second finger on the A 7, third finger as a bar across the G, B, and E strings. And this still kind of gives you the low E string for your bass. Now. It's a very hip voicing if you dig on that. And then from the E minor, we move on to an A major chord. Normally you do this first finger on the D 2nd. Second finger on the G second, third finger on the B second. If you strum all those together, ah, the happy sounds of A major. Now, around A's in general, you may dig on lifting off the third finger, you can add an A sus two, or you can add in the pinky on the B third for an A suspended, kind of say some stuff around it. Or you may even dig on lifting off the second finger, making that an A seven chord. Or you can readjust the fingers if you're slightly offended and do the second finger on the B second, pinky on the high third. There's a little bit more bite. Or you could do this as a bar in A major, doing this as a fifth fret bar. Second finger on the G, sixth, third finger on the A7, pinky on the D7 for an A major chord. Or you could lift off the pinky, make that an A7. Or you could add in the pinky on the B8 for an A7. Or you may even dig on a really cool jazzy voicing called A13. And doing first finger on the low E string, fifth fret. Second finger on the D, fifth. Third finger on the G, sixth, and the pinky as a mini bar. Everybody loves mini bars. Over the E and the B on the seventh fret. You get an A13. Very, very cool voicing. And then from the A, we'll be going to a B minor chord. Now, normally, you do this as kind of a second fret bar. Second finger on the B, third fret. Third finger on the D, fourth. Pinky on the G, fourth. If you strum all those together, uh, this is how the sounds of B minor. Now, you may also dig on lifting the pinky and make that a B minor seven. Or another way to play B minor seven, if you're just starting out. You'll be doing first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B second. It's kind of a B minor seven. Or you may even dig on a drone voicing for this, doing first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. Slightly, slightly unresolved, but that might make that a little bit easier to get from the E minor seven. And if you dig on that voicing, you could tend to take one and two. Switch them to the D and the G string for an A7 sus for the A chord. More unresolved kind of sound definitely a lot easier to finger. And then you could take first finger and go to the A string second for that B minor drone voicing. And then from the B minor, oh, or some other options, actually some jazzier options for the B minor. We'll be doing this as a seventh fret bar. Third finger on the A9, pinky on the D9 for B minor chord. Where you could lift off the pinky and make that a B minor seven. Add in the pinky on the B 10th fret for a B minor 7. And then from the B minor, we'll be going to, and this is a little weird, the G sharp is going on in the bass, but our chord is actually an E major chord. And normally you do that first finger on the G first fret, second finger on the A second, third finger on the D second. And if you strum all those together, ah, oh, the happy sounds of E major. Now, if you really want to get in that G sharp in the bass, this is going to be a stretch, and you may want to lift the, the head of the guitar up. But you can lift off the third finger, making an E7. And then take the pinky and go to the low E string on the fourth fret to make an E7 slash or with a G sharp in the bass. So call it E7 slash G sharp. Now, if you're just looking for easy ways out, you may just want to play the regular E major, or the regular E7, or you get out in the pinky on the B third for an E7. Or if you're looking for a really easy option, instead of an E7 chord, if you're playing it out, you might want to play just E minor instead. But E minor 7 could definitely work. So that way you can just kind of leave 3 and 4 down through the whole tune. You know, some people would catch it and some people wouldn't. Um, 
Or if you want a really jazzy voicing for an E7 chord, you could play an E9 by doing first finger on the D6 fret, second finger on the A7, third finger of the G, B, and E. Definitely a really jazzy voicing for the E7. E, e or if you want to do this as a bar, you can do this as a bar on seventh fret, just like the E minor. Third finger over the D, G, and B on the ninth fret for an E major chord. Or you can keep the bar down, put the third finger on the D9, pinky on the B9, and get the E7 that way. Really leaning towards the E9 myself. And that, especially if you're digging all those for with jazzy or voicing, if you do the E minor 9 to the A13, to the B minor 7, to the E9, and that kind of sets you up to go back to the E minor 9. Now, there's a couple different strumming options you may want to think about through the tune though actually you could kind of think a really slow down count kind of e minor two three four a two three four b minor two three four e e minor a b minor e seven or you could use a strum pattern one of my favorite strum patterns for a four four like this is down down up up down up so you took the E minor and just tried that a lot. You'd have down, 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 down. If you're quick enough, you could probably get that to fit in the recording, kind of doing that that pattern on each chord. It's got a lot of energy that way, and actually I think it's kind of playing against the, the feel of the tune. Or you could try a really slow down, down up on each chord, kind of minor. with a down down up and then go to the A for a up down up B minor with a down down up E with a up down up or sometimes I get really excited and do the E minor with a down down and then hit the A for the up up down up B minor for the down down and E for the up up down up I'm just going to kind of experiment with those, those options too the E minor Minor, you'd have the low E string for the bass. On the A, you'd have the A for the bass. Unless you're doing the, the bar fifth and then or the A13, and then you have low E for the bass. On the B minor, you'd have the A for the bass. Unless you're doing the seventh fret bar, then you have low E for the bass. And on the E, you have the low E for the bass. If you're doing the E slash G sharp, you have the low E for the bass. Or you may want to keep the low E bass and the E not. So we can make it kind of a bass on each chord, got kind of E minor, A, B e minor, E major, A e minor, A, B e minor, E. Or we can kind of add basses and still split the pattern, which would be cool too. E minor, E, E minor, A, B e minor, E minor. Or for myself, I was really digging on something. 16th note strum pattern. And what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot to the beat, right now we're dividing that beat into two parts with our down, down, up, up, down, up. One, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a 16th note is, is where you divide that into four parts. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite 16th note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. And what I mean by that is if we take the E minor and do it down for four. That's what you'd be doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do it down on one, down on three, up on four. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, And on the third beat, you do it up on two, down on three. So we're going one, two, three, four, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down. And then on the last beat, you go down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four. Try 
by just that half of the pattern on each chord. Kind of like modern. down, down, up. Then go to the A for the up, down, down, or up, bass, down, down. E minor, the bass, down, down, up. And then E with the up, bass, down, up, down. pentatonic scale or, or D major pentatonic scale kind of going seventh on the low E to tenth fret on the low E and it's seven to nine on the A seven to nine on the D seven to nine on the G seven to ten on the B and then seven to ten on the high E this is kind of a B and a D and an E and an F sharp and then an A and then we play those same five notes in different places B and D and E and F sharp and A and B and you can work hammer on licks in the scale, pull off licks in the scale. And I've got a long video actually talking a lot of pentatonic licks on Munson Jam tracks. If you go and check out Munson Jam tracks, there's a lot of different uh, lick possibilities working bends, vibrato, double stops, patterns of three. go and experiment that with that if you're kind of interested in that one cool way of, of getting used to that once you kind of get some licks under your fingers with the scale is you can play the chord and make up a lick play the next chord make up a lick play the next chord <laughs> um, lick next chord Experiment with that. That can even be cool trying to get in a little piece of the rhythm. Kind of trying to mix it up to, um, you know, even kind of a bass down lick. Bass down lick. Bass down lick. Bass down lick. Kind of an idea. But, but I know at tempo that could be weird. You may just want to take the scale kind of experiment with that. It's like an alphabet. And licks are words. So you can kind of see what you can say with it. Or if you know the licks around these chords, do feel free to take this lesson and kind of run with it any way you want to. But that's the basics of how you can strum through the body by Wale. So good luck! Hi!
Hi, wherever you are in YouTube land, this is Munson Summer with Munson Music Live, Munson Guitar Songs, Munson Covers, and Munson Jam Tracks. Thanking you for watching this video, and I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see lots more like it. I'm always open to your requests. If you have the song that you love, please let me know so I can write it down on the request list so I can add that to it because there are probably other people out there who love that song too and would love to learn how to play it. So. Thanks so much for all the love that you give me, and I hope that you're doing well and, and kind of figuring out how you can talk with the, the instrument. Um, we are a small music shop in the middle of nowhere in South Carolina, and, and you're supporting us by, by watching this channel. Really appreciate all that love. So best of luck, and I, I, let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you in, in particular, too. I, you can contact me on Facebook. Um, you can leave a message here in the comments section, and I'm, I, I respond to all the comments that, that I get. So, best of luck to you wherever you are.